Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Air Hauler with Mimi Heard 37. So we're still in the 787 of course. Uh in our last flight we ended up down here in New Orleans, one of our bases, KMSY. And it's actually been quite a while since I've flown it. Kind of keeps on happening. Um but in this flight I was kind of looking around. There's not a whole lot of whole big selection here of New Orleans. Uh, not much there at all. I thought about maybe going up to Charlotte, it's a short flight, doesn't pay anything without what position us, you know, to another base that usually has a lot more jobs. Um, I thought about Juno. It's kind of, it's such a nice airport there, but uh, a lot of times the weather is not so great there this time of year. I tried to fly the 787 there, I think, once before, and it was a disaster because you the, the visibility was just horrible. Uh, but we do have a, a job here going up to Fairbanks. We have senior from that for Airsoft, and I just checked the weather, and it seems pretty good up there. So I think that's what we're going to do. Um, PAFA. By the way, I just realized I don't really have any bases up in Alaska other than Juno. We have a scenery for both Fairbanks and Anchorage, so maybe we need uh, some bases up there. So I thought about maybe we could do that. Uh, because we're not going to have anything coming from PAFA, so I'm going to have to position or have someone do that. And they would have to go way up there to Alaska to do it. So I thought maybe we just go ahead and create some bases up there. That might be good. Anyhow, I've got this thing loaded up, so we'll go ahead and get this thing going. And our 787. All right, so I've got it loaded up. A 3163. Um, I pulled back a little bit, I think, on the weight on the fuel. I think it was actually going to be, if I can get into the FMC, I'm not sure, maybe uh, closer to like 81,000 pounds to 12,000 pounds less. Um, but that's what's in it right now. The dispatcher for 787 says a little to use a little bit less. And we have been landing pretty heavy with a lot of extra fuel. So if I can, I will do that. Um, but uh, hopefully that'll work. And day five, I'm going to move this way back, even though we are flying out to the west, so that's not so bad. Um, I'm going to do like 930. That should be pretty good. Because it is a, <laughs> three, it's going to be over a little over 3,000 miles. I think I got it calculated. 3,136, I think, nautical miles. So it is going to take a while. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and move on over to the plane. All right, everybody, here we are at the plane down here in New Orleans. I don't see anybody around. Not really surprising. And I jumped in here, and I noticed like my views seem really screwed up. I seem to feel zoomed out. I was way over to the right, so I don't know what happened. Uh, but. Anyhow, we'll go ahead and get this thing going. Let's go over here. Reference airport, we can do KMSY, KMSY. Not really required to do that, but anyway, anyhow, KMSY. And we're going up to Fairbanks, says PAFA. Alpha. That in there, activate and execute. All right, so let's go over to departures and arrivals real quick. Departing, uh, let's see, it'll be runway 10. On here, it's going to be 11, so we'll take that. And arrival at Fairbanks, two left. So there we uh, go. Uh, approaches. Let me... Huh, I totally forgot to write that down. I can't believe I forgot to write that down. The on star. I do believe it is that one, though. We'll check it just to make sure. Actually, we can go ahead and check it right now real quick. Just so I don't forget. Uh, do we have to do it through here? Let's go over to the legs real quick. This didn't take us right to the runway anyway. We'll have to go over to heading mode and probably fly over a little bit. When we get there... Let's move in the range a little bit. Set through that. It's weird, I those aren't connected, so... I'll move that up over there, and then you can see it flat. So we probably won't have to go to heading, but I guess it'll be over there. 
Sometimes it gets weird like that. Like the PMGD, PMDG is really good at that, but some of the others not so much. All right, reserves. I always like to say three. Uh, cruising altitude. We're flying out. To, I don't know if it'd be more west or north. We'll say north. So we'll do odds. Let's say thirty-seven thousand feet. Cost index. Let's say eighty-five. Is your fuel so on? Um, so it did actually use the one from the dispatcher or here on the fuel. So I'm glad with that. So hopefully we'll be good. Won't land. Have to land is too heavy. Do a uh, normal takeoff, not a derail takeoff. Let's go with flaps 15. Say 15. 6.5 on the trim. As always, it takes forever in this plane. Although it says it's in the green, but obviously I want to get up to 6.5. So that's where it's technically supposed to be. There we go, 6.5. Check out our V speeds. V2 is 149. Alright, and let's check our approach speed real quick. Alright, so about 143. So let me check the legs real quick again. Make sure there are no other discontinuities. I didn't see anything, but I wasn't checking too much. All right, so one, four, three. Obviously, I don't want to be all that fast. Two left, one, four. Th it needs to be like one, four, eight. Our approach speed. 170, that's probably a little fast. Let's say 162. That, I've noticed that it doesn't always like to kick up, pick up my clicks. 162 and 8 miles for that. We can't be at 240. Um, let's say 190. And now it's 9 miles before that. Let's say... 220 and 240 will be all right. I don't really like how it, we always have to redo that in this plane. By the way, what is we? What are our two warnings over here? Fuel low center, TCAS off. We do have fuel in the center tank, so right, 4.6. TCAS is on. Let's go ahead and put our taxi light on. Parking brake is off. Brakes are an RTO. And let's go find our runway. Runway 10. I believe that this is it. We'll be taking off this way. Let's see if we can go find it. And let's see the the runway of the heading of the runway is one zero five degrees. I feel like we're about to go way too fast. See if I can get this set now. I did see another plane moving around there a second ago. So maybe we won't be all alone. I turned it, uh, the scenery. I should have uh, gone straight there for a second before I turned. It is extremely dense, and I think I put dense for auto gym. Just because it is a long flight, and last time I went up to I tried to fly this plane, 
from Palm Springs up to Anchorage, and it, right as we were about to land, we we're on a short final, and just it all broke down. Uh, I OM'd at the very last minute, and it was like, just geez. So I didn't want to. If I had turned the traffic down that at that time, it probably would have been all right because there was a ton of traffic. Auto throttles are armed. You can have an LNAV. Ah. Wait, I gotta turn on the flight directors. That always helps. There we go. LNAV and Vino are armed. Now, so I turned everything down just a little bit. Well, I left uh, scenery complexity all the way to the right, but turned autogen down just a little bit. Hopefully, that'll help. I can't stand <laughs> to fly for several hours and then, oh, we am at the last second. That's never good. Alright, there's a plane up there taking runway 10. So it's like they're using the same runway. Going a little quick here at 22 knots to bring it down just a little bit. Alright, putting the flaps out to 15. Couldn't tell what plane that was. I thought it was commercial, but then I thought it kind of looked like a almost like a business jet, the Lear jet, but I don't think it is. Those lights with the halo effect. Flight attendants, please be seated for departure. Let's see who this guy is. Is it American? It, I think it is American. It's kind of hard to tell. Wow, the views moved crazy on that. Now it feels like it's moving to the left back where it originally was. Before I had to swap it over to the... Right. <laughs> I, I just... Uh, easy doc. I wish there was something better. I don't know if Chase Plane works with FSX or not. I think we went out a little too far, but I got pretty slow there as well. I hear the engines of somebody. Let me see. That still looks pretty good. I don't know why just a minute ago it moved everything so much. There's, there's really water right there. And I hear, like I say, I hear another plane, but I don't see anybody. Alright, so landing lights are coming on. Strobes coming on. I see the warning about the fuel low, but I'm, I want to burn all that fuel. It's a 4.1, so we're right. Let's go ahead and take... Runway. Feels kind of heavy, like she's really tough to get going there for a minute. We go out just a little far. It's just moved over again. Actually, pretty good. Alright, so the brakes are in RTO. Flaps are set. Brakes, uh, I think everything looks as good to me. I always have to remember there's our toga switch. Alright. Start bringing up the power, holding the brakes. Alright, here we go. Toga. Check for us. I'll push forward just a little bit. 
80 knots. Checked. Check it up to speed pretty quick on that. On the 80 knots. Usually it seems to take a little while longer. B1. Rotate. B2. Positive rate, gear's coming up. Positive rate, gear up. Oh, there's the city of uh, New Orleans straight ahead. That's pretty sweet. Now, she's not saying anything about flaps. And I wish they would. Engage the autopilot. Autopilot and command. Flaps five. Flaps going to five. So they skip ten. That's a pretty sweet view, man. From that takeoff, that would be a badass takeoff. Flaps one. Flaps going to one. OCD right there to click. Beautiful ocean. Or is that Lake Pontchartrain? I have no idea. Because there's land on the other side. That is to the northeast, so I guess that would... Is that the... I have no idea. With our flight on the way, I'd like to get local. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and retract the flaps. They don't tell you to, but I know we're at 240 knots. I got it. Tax light off. After takeoff checklist. Down to two. There she is back behind. Let's take a look outside real quick. I feel like the outside views are even messed up a little bit. But that was a really cool takeoff, I gotta say. You know? Just flying right towards the downtown area. It's acting pretty well uh, with the frame rate and everything, because you can see it's still pretty daggone dense. There's our views over to the left again. Move this on down. 300. Zero, zero. We're at 10,000 feet, so let's go ahead and turn off the landing lights. Let's see how, about how long this is going to take. Let's see how that's moved back. Progress. So see, fuel quantity. Well, up there at 17.0. I was looking at that. Still a little more than we wanted, really. Uh, 2220. So a good six hours. Man, it's a long flight. I, did. I set that to 39,000. I think uh, I had it actually planned for 37. Let's do it for 39,000. That shouldn't change too much. Oh, it came down a little bit. I'm glad it's coming down a little bit. But of course, that'll change as time goes on. That's how it is in this plane. Kind of nice weather. Textures look really good out there, I gotta say. I like the different, it's almost kind of a, like a light green. I kind of, I really like that. No add ons for that other than Open LC, of course. Orbex, it was like FTX Global. Default textures. 
I have USC's X New Orleans, but like I said, there's no point in using it. It's not very good nowadays. We might range up a little bit. But uh, we're well on our way. I gotta switch my tanks here in a second. Point four. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed on up, everybody, and I'll be back in just a little bit.
Please check that your seatbelt is securely fastened. To prepare for landing, it will be necessary to collect all service items, as well as any other items you wish to discard, such as newspapers. All right, everybody, slowing it down to normal speed here, making a turn out here. We need to check a few things. Our fuel might be, like, right on point, by the way. 3.9. So that's pretty good. We've been flying against the wind, some pretty stiff wind. 70, 80 knots, like, the entire way. So it's not a big surprise. 140, 140. Let's check our speeds real quick. Oh, we were actually there. Runway 2, 140, so I want that 145. Or should I put that 140? I'm not sure. Ah, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Now it didn't move it, did it? Or take it off. 145. There we go. So we need to be at 162 at the next waypoint. Ah, you can see we're speeding up. I'll pull that back. I'll fix that. Well, I w it was easier to fix earlier. We had to do that a bunch. We're really s having problems like speeding up and everything. We're at a heading of 257 now turning. See, I can't get any flaps out to help because of our we're going too fast even to get this flaps out. Now she's coming down, though. Heading of the runway. Runway two left is zero one six degrees. Yeah, now the speed's coming down. I had to mute my mic for a second. 
All right, now let's get the flaps out. I'm gonna get rid of that speed brake or arm them here. Yeah, we were like 10,000 feet too high for a long time. Like uh, the plane, I think it was because we were at 4X, uh, kind of went past the top of descent. It just, you know, took a while. It doesn't go straight down like it, uh, you would need it to at 4X, so we were higher for a while. All right, putting flaps out to five. Reset the altimeter here. Speed slowly coming down, creeping down. About to make a right turn here. Hopefully that's going to give us enough time uh, to get every... We can look here. I think it, we're going to have like 8 miles or something. So we got 5 miles. To get everything set up perfectly. 2,500. 2,500. I'm going to go... Uh, see, I don't... I should have waited. I didn't know we were going to turn right then. Obviously you don't want to put the gear down while you're turning. I sure thought about that a second ago, and I was like, "Ah, no problem." <laughs> I'll just—I was gonna wait till I get on the straightaway here, and I want to go ahead and put them down. Damn it! So I'd like to just kind of come straight out here, and when we could do that, we could put on the heading select. What did I say? Zero, yeah, one, zero, one, six. The heading of the runway. And 140 is landing speed, so 145 is our approach. The meter F plus five. Now I have our altitude uh, set here at 2,000. We can't go below it. There's the uh, flash. See, I'm afraid that we're going to get too daggone close. I'm not liking a, uh, unless that's a, that might be actually the, a different airport. There's no way because it's up and to the right a little more than that. I mean, I guess it could be ours, but I'm not too sure about that. Flaps going to 15. Actually, they're already at 15 now. That was quick. See, I'd like to be over here and come in. But I think at five miles, I mean, five miles it should be good. I'm about to go ahead and click off. The, I'm going to go ahead and click off the auto throttles. Got a little speed up there when I uh, move my throttle. Although I think maybe at the angle we'll have uh, even more time actually. So now, you know, we're at the 2000. Watch that speed. the localizer we're coming up on the glide slope now man come on plane autopilot coming off this is not what I wanted at all okay so two left okay so now that everything's been screwed up And we're going to come in high. What's new? So 
So our speed is good right there. We gotta get our flaps out. I think in the end we're gonna be okay. Feels like we're kind of getting seconds. pushed. Our speed's getting a little too slow here. Just warn us about the fuel quantity. I'm all right with that. Flaps are at 25. Now we're looking a lot better. Just had to get everything set. Trying to trim it down just a little bit. All right, we're at full flaps. Now we're getting high again. One thousand. I don't like it. It seems like you trim it a couple times, and all of a sudden it really messes with the nose big time, more than it should. Speed's good, but falling a little bit. Still a high. Five hundred. Getting a little slow. Four hundred. Three hundred. Approaching. Minimum. Man, see, there's that wind kick, and it it hits you up and minimum. sideways. Look what it did to our speed. That is such bullshit. God, I'm getting really annoyed with that. Opus, I'm about to just kick 100. Opus to the curb. 50, 40, 30. Yeah, we're just going to go way 20. long. Man, I can't even begin to believe that. 10. Getting kicked like that, man, Opus... About, I'm about done with the, uh, that program. My God. 80 knots manual braking. I, we just can't... When it kicks me like that, it, it shoves me up in the air and to the side. And you saw what it did to the speed. And I don't know how to get that to not happen. At that time, please remember to check around your seating area, in the seat pockets, and overhead bins for all personal belongings that you brought on board. Please take care when opening the overhead bins, as the contents may have shifted during flight. Alright. Oh, a bit of good news about getting rid of Opus. I'm moving over to Active Sky. I just got, uh, I had an interview last week. Got my, I'm going to get my old job back in March, middle of March. So I'll make the move over to Active Sky or something. I'm done with uh, screwing around with Opus, doing that kind of stuff. I'm about, I'm about just so tired of that. Stop the recording. I don't know exactly where we should park. I thought about going straight ahead, but it didn't look like there's a lot of area. I'm thinking maybe come over here. Yeah, I can't deal with that, man. That's just ridiculous. You can't land like that. Landing lights and strobes coming off. I'll turn on the APU, although it's not going to make any difference. Uh, every time I OOM every single time. Wow, couldn't get through the view there. Uh, when I go back to air hauler and then come back here, we unfortunately OOM every single time. I guess I could have gone up to that other taxi well, taxi line. I wasn't sure, so I just took this one. And look at the hydraulics overheating. I'm not really sure why. Not oh, that auto brake. I'm not really, no, really sure what would, uh, let's take this right here. Cause the hydraulics over here. I had that, I got those errors one time in a previous flight. Uh, I think it was up to Alaska as well, actually. 
I think it was maybe either the one to Juno or to Anchorage. But I uh, haven't had it, haven't seen it since that one time. I could have pulled straight ahead, man. There's a parking area right there, apparently. Is that a parking area straight ahead? It sure looks like it. And if it isn't, it's about to be one. <laughs> Maybe you could have pulled right up to that guy, actually. Actually, I think these uh, parking areas are, yeah, to the, to the sides. I don't know if I can, if I'm good enough at turning to park this beast in such a short area. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. I should have let it go way further if I'm going to try and park it here, I think. Uh, there's just not enough room. Actually, we didn't come all that... It's not that bad, actually. I'm trying to get it hard left. you got to give it fuel to... Let's see, how much are we off? Actually, we're like right on it. I'm actually surprised. And I'm not paying attention to that guy. I'm not sure he even really moves correctly or not. So we're going to say it's good right there. Parking brake is on. Let's check the APU stuff right here. I think everything is automatic on here. So it looks like we're good there. Cut the fuel. This was an extremely long flight, by the way. Taxi light, you can go off if I can click you. There we go. I don't... Oh, that's right. We can uh, click there. I'll say there's external power. So we'll turn the APU off. Oops. There we go. Everything is off now. Let's go over to... Here we go, air hauler. And it's just landing so far down the runway. Uh, well, what can you do? I mean, I'm not coming out of my control. 93 miles worth of fuel, well, according to air hauler. Not sure how much uh, quality wings we've said you get. Here we go. Stop the flight monitoring. Come on. There we go. Well, at least we did make some money. And, you know, I had to get on the throttle a little bit when we were trying to land because, uh, man, we were just going to drop 97.85, and that sucks. Because we were going to drop because we were getting so slow. I don't want to damage the cargo. Cash book. Had some other people do some jobs. Somebody destroyed a triple seven, man, um, and it cost. I'll probably never find it. It's twenty three million something, thirty million something like that to repair a dag on triple seven. I don't remember who did that, but damn it. All right, but anyway, we made two hundred eighty eight thousand on that, and that was pretty dag on. You can see the other people, but these are some of the most expensive jobs uh, that are on the board. Period, and obviously we not that luxury. We can only do what we're at. Uh, we can't add our base. So I was going to create a base here, um, up out here. Deck on it. All the, all the way down here at New Orleans. Um, I'm not going to do that because I won't have a chance to fly until my next day's off. Which is in like seven days. There we are. No, that's not us. It'll show us up here in a second. I think we're a little to the north maybe. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do that like before the next episode, create a base up here, and that way, there we are. That way, because uh, it's going to create some jobs and everything, and it's no point in creating all those jobs in here. I'm going <laughs> to not be able to fly for another, like, seven days, so that's kind of pointless. So I'll leave that off there. There is actually a person over here. They could actually take it over to Juno. But I, I wanted that base there, and that, he might actually be Jeremiah Bennett. He might be at Anchorage. I'll check him out here, Jeremiah Bennett. Where are you, Jeremiah Bennett? There he is. He is at Anchorage. Cool. 
So that's where Anchorage will be. Uh, Fairbanks is here. We'll have two bases. I think that's pretty good. There's, I don't think there's anywhere else here with big enough runways to make it worthwhile. Like Kanae or anything. I think those are too small. Uh, Ketchikan. I think that's how you say it. Someone was trying to correct me. I want to say Ketchikan. I think it's Ketchikan. I think it's runways. Are, yeah, it's runways are too small. It's somewhere over in this area. It's too small. But we'll have those. And I don't probably much finish off in Alaska. But, yeah, sorry about the landing, man. Opus is just really screwing me up. It's it's bad enough, you know, on the small planes. But when you're in a 787 and that wind hits you like that, it changes the speed, it changes my altitude, it changes everything, and it's just, ugh. I almost don't want to fly this again so I can get, like, active sky or something. Uh, so it's kind of pissing me off. But I'm going to have a bunch of uh, bills and stuff, I'm sure, when I transition from, you know, one job to another. Because who even knows about the paychecks? I... Well, as soon as I get there, I might be like three or four weeks away from another paycheck uh, when I switch. So I don't want to spend any more money than I have to. So that's the only reason I haven't gotten active sky yet. But, uh, yeah, I'll do that next. And I'm going to get track IR and get some other uh, scenery and stuff on planes. But uh, it's going to be good. I'm so excited to be back at that job or about to be back at that job. But uh, anyhow, that's going to be it for this episode. Everybody. I hope you all did enjoy it. I'll catch you guys on the next flight. Approaching minimums. Minimums. Two hundred.